Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. I'm coming at you today with a fun challenge that uh, Curly Cosplay put together or decided that we should all do, and that is to do a project in a day. So I am currently working on a, a basically an Edwardian full outfit. Um, I decided I wanted an Edwardian jumper dress, which meant that I needed to make an Edwardian blouse, which I then realized meant I needed to make an Edwardian corset, and of course I also needed an Edwardian corset cover. I do al already have the petticoat and the bum pad, so I did not need to make those, but I needed to make everything else. So at this point, I have finished the corset, I am partway through the blouse and the jumper, but I have not yet started the corset cover. So I figured what better project to do for this project in a day challenge than my Edwardian corset cover. Now I'm making this a little bit harder on myself because I, uh, you know, we're all in quarantine right now and I can't go buy any more fabric. I've been using up a fair amount of fabric since all of this started, so I am getting low on muslin or other lightweight white cotton fabrics, which is what I need to use to make my corset cover out of. So I have this large bundle of muslin scraps that uh, are left over from various projects or mock-ups or what have you. So I'm additionally challenging myself to make my corset cover out of this bundle of scraps. Now, as you can tell, it's quite a large bundle, so I don't really think that will be a problem. There's a possibility that I may need to do some piecing, but that is period. And uh, so really it's just that this will probably make the challenge slightly harder as far as the cutting out stage. Now I am going to be using the Truly Victorian Edwardian underwear pattern. This one right here, that's TV02, E02. And uh, I got this second hand. I believe I got this, or I know I got this, from the bargain basement at Costume College. I don't remember what year, but I've had this for a little while, never opened it up before, and decided to make this before actually opening it up. When I did open it up, what I found was that my pattern pieces were nicely already cut for me, but unfortunately already cut in the wrong size. So these pattern pieces are cut to a size G. According to their pattern chart, it looks like I'm pretty much a J. So I will need to be sizing up these patterns just a little bit, but that shouldn't be too difficult. However, again, it does add to the um, speed or <laughs> it decreases the speed that I will be able to complete this. So I'm really hoping, you know, it's a small garment. I'm hoping that it should still be pretty easy to do in a day. It is 2.18 p.m. right now. I have a terrible habit of staying up late, but this is, I'm filming this on a Sunday, so I can't stay up too late because I do have to wake up early for work tomorrow, even though I get to be working from home. Uh, the other thing that I noticed about this pattern is that I'm also missing, I believe, the waistband of this pattern. Waistbands are, you know, straight pieces, so I'm not too worried. It should be easy enough to do. I'll just figure that out on my own. Um, but let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out all of my pattern pieces, which means digging through my pile and finding pieces that are large enough for all of my various pattern pieces. Ideally, I would really like to take the smaller pattern pieces and cut them out of some of the smaller scraps. I don't know if that's actually going to be able to happen, but um, fingers crossed. What I'm doing here is sizing up the pattern. To do that, I'm looking at the difference between the three sizes that are still visible in this pattern, so coming back from G, and then taking that amount and adding it to the pattern shape to get to my size. I'm drawing those lines into place with a friction pen. So quick pause because I was going around cutting out the um, front facing piece, and what I noticed was that the person who originally cut this did not cut this on the G lines like I thought they were doing originally. Um, and in fact, now that I'm looking at some of the various other pattern pieces, she has all the pattern pieces cut on different lines. So this is gonna be much more challenging. This is actually cut on H line, whereas this is cut on like G height, but A line on the outside, I think. So, and this is the A shape. So, um, yeah, this is gonna be slightly more challenging and I have to do some uh, more fiddling and figuring, but 
so it's gonna slow me down a little unfortunately this is why okay so my two least favorite parts which I think I mentioned in my Q&A video my two least favorite parts of sewing are mock-ups and cutting now I'm not doing a mock-up of this I'm living dangerously I figure it's a pattern it's also underwear it's blousey it's gonna fit you know relatively decently no matter what I do um, but uh, I also hate cutting this is one of the reasons that I hate cutting because being a plus-size person um, patterns a lot of patterns butterick simplicity etc some of them now are coming up to my size or I can just cut them and it's great but not all of them are coming up to my size and so I tend to have to size up patterns frequently so that's not a problem um, that's what I'm doing on this however once we get into things have been cut weirdly it gets weirder so um, yeah that's gonna slow me down a little bit I've got some puzzling to do so I'm gonna get to it okay I figured all of that out I have now cut these two sides to my size which is a little easier cut this to the size that I thought it was and um, and scaled up this one and this side so that'll be easier I can also just use this this is a facing front front facing for the corset cover um, and I can actually just take this and I will use this to make or rather my piece I'll use that to make my neckline so I only have to do it once at least which is good So one of the other things that I have to do when I'm patterning something, which I forgot to do with the facing, though I can still save it, is that I am tall. I'm 5'10", so I have to increase length in everything. Um, and so I realized when I went to go whole, uh, I was about to cut out the corset front facing, that it's all one length for everyone apparently, which seems odd. Um, but I guess it works. Anyway, so what I realized is that I need to lengthen this pattern because right now this pattern barely, barely hits my waist. Um, and that means that it won't stay tucked in. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to add about an inch through the arm's eye. I normally would just do it to the strap, but because I already cut out the facing and I don't feel like cutting it out again, I'm just going to kind of extend it right here. Uh, because right now this is too short to go around my arm. You can see just how short that is on me. And so I'm going to extend the arm's eye by an inch. And I'm also going to extend the bottom by an inch. So overall this pattern is going to get two inches in length. Which should give me enough that the waistband will stay tucked into skirts. So that is the next step that I'm going to do. And I'm just going to write this kind of on the pattern just so I remember to do it when I get to this piece since I'm not on this cutting out this piece yet. I'm cutting them out in order of size, smallest to largest, so that I can use up those small scraps. No, but really, why did I save a scrap like this? This isn't worth saving. Anyway, so I've cut out all my facings now, so now I'm going to cut out the actual bodice pieces. Luckily I did have that section of actual yardage of muslin because all of my little scraps are enough for one front bodice and neither back bodice which is cut on the fold. Um, so I will be breaking into the yardage for that and unfortunately I still have a ton of scraps left because they just, my pieces don't fit and there's just not that many pieces. I do also have to cut out the ruffle. Um, the ruffle does doesn't really tell you the grain line it says cut on fold over here but it doesn't tell you the grain line so I might kind of just like play with things I know that certain grain lines of ruffles do different things than other grain lines so I might do a little research first and see which one I should be doing but if I can do the ruffle the length of the fabric instead of the width I can use up a whole bunch of my scraps because a lot of them are fairly narrow but very long of uh, the length of the fabric so that is my goal um, but what I'm doing right now is I'm taking my collar facing piece that I already cut out and I'm laying it on my front piece just to make sure that I have that neckline <laughs> the same for both facing and for the front um, also while increasing the length of the front piece like I mentioned earlier what I'm doing here is I'm placing the facing piece up about one inch from where the pattern actually is so that I can get that extension through the arm's eye that I'm looking for. 
So because I cut the front facing piece before I remembered that I would need to lengthen the arm's eye, um, I will have to slightly tweak the facing piece because I don't know if you can see these lines at all, but my facing piece would have had the arm's eye going out a little further and winding up t shorter in the arm's eye than, um, than I'm actually doing, than the curve that I'm actually doing. So my brain stopped working somewhere around when I got to trying to figure out the patterning and sizing and whatever of the back piece. Um, so I did something and I have decided that I'm just going to <laughs> cut it out and sew it to the front piece and hopefully it works. If not, I do have enough muslin to cut out either two more fronts or two more backs, not both. So um, yeah, I'm hoping that they will work. And if not, I'll figure it out, but I'm spending too long on cutting. My brain is melting. I mean, it's already been an hour and a half that I've been cutting, which is stupid. Um, so yeah, my brain's gone. So I'm probably going to um, cut out the back piece, uh, which I've already like drawn out, but I'm gonna cut it out and sew it to the fronts see what it looks like and then take my dog for a walk because I need a cleanse. In fact, I might even do that before trying it on. So, um, I will be back in a bit. Hello everyone. It is significantly later now. Uh, it is six o'clock. Um, but I'm back. I had a nice two mile walk with my dog and then we had some dinner. I had some dinner. I suppose he had some too. Um, and I watched a couple episodes of TV and cleared my mind and came back to the project. So I searched all the edges and assembled the bodice pieces. I also cut out the ruffle um, and then I went ahead and tried it on. I'm not wearing the corset or anything, but I figure it's gonna fit the same anyway. It's kind of supposed to be blousey anyway. Um, what I'm actually thinking here is that it, I may have added too much length. I know that it's supposed to be blousey and pigeon front, but it seems a little bit long. Having the waistband will help because it will put it at my natural waist. But right now it is feeling just a little bit on the long side, maybe by like half an inch, like it's not a lot. Uh, the other thing that I'm finding here is that the neckline is very yappy. Um, now it is supposed to have beading lace, which is that lace that has the ribbon threaded through it. It's supposed to have that around the neckline. So that would probably solve this problem. That said, I don't know that I have beading lace. So what I might wind up doing is just putting in a drawstring or something if I don't, if I can't find beading lace. But, um, but I think I'm going to leave it as is. It seems to be relatively okay. It's just a little bit gappy. I actually have this problem almost always that almost everything has to have a curved front for me if it's gonna fit correctly, particularly in Victorian bodices. Um, I always have to curve the front seam because otherwise things just don't fit. I can't do a straight front seam. So, um, so that's a common problem for me, but everything else seems to fit pretty okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run with the pattern as is, which uh, <laughs> the reason I searched it is so I wouldn't have to take this apart. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start adding the ruffles and following the rest of the pattern instructions. The pattern does start with the ruffles. So first thing I'm going to do is actually take my strips, serge them, hem them, and ruffle them. So I have four strips. It called for making three strips or cutting three strips of the length of the pattern piece uh which is on a fold and then sewing them together and cutting them into four strips which like to me doesn't make any sense so i did these lengthwise like i had mentioned before i did look up uh to see how that would change the ruffles and didn't care enough it didn't it didn't do a big deal so um so i went ahead and cut them on the length of the grain and uh and just made them each 33 inches. So a couple of them actually don't have seams and then a couple of them I needed to piece together some bits um, so that I could get that 33 inches. But I've gone ahead and done that so now I'm going to hem these and gather these uh, with the machine. I'm not going to use my ruffle foot and then I'm going, oh I also have some eyelet lace that I think I'm going to apply. So I have this lace right here if it'll focus uh, maybe well anyway i have this eyelet lace and i think i'm going to i've never 
really known how to use lace that doesn't have like an edge like this. So I think I'm actually gonna run it through the serger, maybe with the rolled hem is what I'm thinking. Rolled hem, roll hem one edge, and then uh, just go ahead and attach it like underneath the hem of the ruffle strips. Cause I think that this would look really pretty having that all over. I'll probably wind up putting this honestly all over because I want it to be kind of cute and frilly. So I have a feeling I'll put some around the, the arm size since it's a sleeveless and, um, and maybe if I can't find that beading lace, I might also put it around the neckline. So we'll see that's later, but first I'm going to do ruffles. So I'll come back to you soon. Hello again, everyone. It's a little while later and I have assembled all of my ruffles. So they all look like that now with the little nice, neat rolled hem on the back, I'm trying to make that focus, um, of the eyelet lace. And then I've gathered these, but I haven't pulled them up to size yet. And I've also gone and I've surged all of the rest of my pieces. The only piece that I actually have yet to cut out is the waistband because again, that piece was missing from my pattern. So I am, I figure I'll, I will cut that one out once I get to that step in the pattern, just because that by that point, I hopefully will have a better idea of exactly how big it needs to be. Um, I am used to making skirt waistbands, which I always cut four inches wide and then fold and then the two ends fold in. So they wind up being one and a half inches wide. It seems a little bit wide for this waistband. So I'm thinking I might start with three and a half inches and then have it be the length of my waist plus enough to overlap um, because it, it buttons shut. So um, that I will get to later, but for now I'm going to start gathering up the ruffles and attaching them to the facings because the first step is actually to attach the ruffle to the front facing. So um, a little bit different than I thought it would be. The second ruffle gets attached to this, I think, but uh, the first one is actually attached to the facing and the facing is flipped, I believe, to the outside instead of the inside. So a little funky. Uh, these instructions, I don't know if it's just that my brain is not working today, which is entirely possible, or if these instructions are basically not English because my brain is not processing them at all. I'm reading the words and they don't make sense. So it's entirely possible that I will completely stray from this, but it's already 7.23 and I need to get this done hopefully in the next like three hours if I'm gonna complete this challenge and still go to bed at a reasonable hour to get up for work tomorrow. So, um, fingers crossed. So I have pinned the first ruffle to the yoke and wow, that's springy. I am a little worried because that is so springy. Um, I think part of it is that that is just like a lot of ruffle for this amount of space, um, which is interesting because the ruffle is actually not, uh, it's not like, it's not graded in size. It's the same ruffle, no matter how large your yoke is. And mine is one of the larger yokes. Um, so it's a lot of ruffle. And then on top of that, by adding the, um, eyelet trim and especially the eyelet trim with the rolled hem, it's getting a lot more spring even. So, um, yeah, this is going to be <laughs> a lot. I hope it's not too much. Um, well, we shall see once I put a little bit more together. Okay, so this actually looks like it's going to be pretty darn cute. They've uh, toned down a little bit now that I've sewn them on. Um, so it's time to attach the facing to the actual part of the corset cover. Okay, so I've been putting the facings and stuff on the um, corset cover. And it is my opinion now that I'm doing all of this, that this pattern is stupid um basically so what is going on here is that this is having me do the facings all to the outside which makes no sense facings are facings they go on the inside so i'm gonna have ugly top stitching like all along this yoke in the back well it's gonna look like a yoke because it's a facing that's on the outside it doesn't make any sense but at this point i'm far too into it to change anything <sighs> not happy with this pattern it's funny this is like the second truly Victorian pattern that I'm kind of doing in a row I really really loved the corset the 1903 corset fantastic fit like a dream I had to make almost no changes and it was like perfect this 
not so much. So now that I have all of the facings all sewn down, um, what I'm doing is, uh, because I didn't do it originally, so on this pattern there is a marking line for putting on the second ruffle. I didn't mark that line, and also I changed this pattern shape fairly significantly with everything, and so I just feel like that line doesn't make any sense. So what I've decided to do is um, I kind of laid down the second ruffle, second layer ruffle, um, where I thought it would look good underneath this first one, and I determined that that was 1.75 inches down. So I have gone and marked that uh, row or stitch line for the second ruffle, so I'll go to do it on the other side, and then I'm going to stitch the ruffle down, and it says to put like lace or trim or something on top of that, which doesn't make much sense because it's underneath this ruffle. Um, so I am going to, I think, just do some like bias tape because it's nine o'clock and I'm getting tired of this project. And also I'm annoyed at it because the stupid outside facings. Cause see, look at these silly facings that go to the outside. It's just silly. Just why? Why do you do this? This doesn't make any sense. Nope. So, yeah, use this pattern cautiously. I'm back, the second ruffle is done, and I have topped it with some bias tape. What I'm now going to do is put bias tape around the arm size so that I can finish that off. Um, I'm just going to machine it down, I think, because I don't really feel like doing it by hand, but we'll see if I change my mind on that once I have the first side down. Um, and then I also need to do the waistband and then buttonholes and buttons. I'm really not sure that that's all gonna happen tonight because it's already almost 10 o'clock because I had to take a short break. So yeah, and I have to wake up at like 7.40. So we shall see. So all of the iron side facing is done now. I don't love how machine switched facing looks. But um, both for time and the fact that this is underwear and no one's going to see this except you all, um, I, you know, that's how it's going to be. And it's very possible, though not likely, but very possible that I might undo the machine stitching on the inside right here where it goes over the ruffles because I really don't like how the ruffles are puckering. And so I might just hand stitch just this section. Um, that way it won't catch the ruffle. But... It won't be today so if I do that it'll be later but anyway um now it's time for the waistband I've decided that I'm going to cut the waistband as um, my corseted waist measurement in this corset plus uh, half an inch just to be safe plus one inch for overlap plus one inch for seam allowance so um, I'm gonna cut that by three and a half and see what scrap I can use up all right, the waistband is attached, which means it is time for buttonholes and buttons. I'm not positive if I will do all of this tonight because it is almost 11 o'clock, but um, I'm at least going to start the buttonholes, assuming that I have buttons that I can use, but I think I do. So uh, yeah, next up, it's almost done, just needs closures. Though, one other annoying thing about this pattern, it doesn't have button placement. so. It doesn't say how far apart the buttons should be, doesn't say where the buttons should go, doesn't show where the buttons should go, so that's great. I have to figure it out myself and especially figure it out because they can't run into the ruffles because the ruffles go right across the buttons. So I don't recommend this pattern. So unfortunately, I have failed this challenge. It's 11.32 and my main machine has decided that it doesn't want to do buttonholes anymore at all. Um, I've been having some issues with my machine where whenever the needle goes all the way to the right or even close to all the way to the right, it just skips all its stitches. So um, that's partly what's happening now and the other part is that the button holder can't handle going over bumps, aka the ruffles. So um, that one's not working. So I decided, okay, great, I'll use my backup machine and try the button holder on there. Um, it worked fine for the first buttonhole, which had no ruffles near it. Then when I tried to do one near the ruffles, again, no, it doesn't like it. So um, I need to figure out if my main machine will do a four-step buttonhole because my backup machine, I don't think, even has a four-step that I can do. Um, 
And my main machine does have a four step, but I think it's still gonna have the same issue of going too far to the right. So it's gonna take me five times as long to do buttonholes as it normally would. And that's not something I'm gonna do at 11.30 when I'm like dri being driven crazy by how stupid this project is. So um, I will finish this video tomorrow. I will finish this corset cover tomorrow, but messing with all this garbage is not something that I need to do at 1130 when I should be going to bed. So, um, yeah, I guess this will still be a 24 hour challenge probably since I started so late today, which was also stupid. Um, but it will not be a one day challenge all in one day, I guess. Um, here is a cat for happiness because I'm frustrated and Dora is happy. So Let's just take a cat moment. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Hello everyone, it is a new day and the nice thing about working from home is that I can use my lunch break to hopefully finish these silly buttonholes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do some, I guess, tinkering on my machine, play around, see if I can find that four step on my old Viking, and if not, figure out how to make things work on my brother, even though I can't do anything when the needles all the way to the right right now. So um, hopefully things will open up soon and I can get that machine fixed. But uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead and try those buttonholes. All right, so it took me way too long to do something as stupidly simple as buttonholes, considering this involved both last night and today. Um, but they are done, finally. And what I wound up having to do was luckily my big machine that I normally use does have a four step buttonhole um, and after literally physically abusing it. I'm not the only one who does that, right? Um, it decided that most of the time it wouldn't skip stitches when it went to the right hand side. Um, so I just had to give it a little smack and, uh, and it decided that it would listen to me for now. Um, and I was able to do my four step buttonholes. I decided to just do the four step because it gave me way more control and I knew how big the buttonholes needed to be by now because I had done a few successfully last night um, and I was able to do it without my feet really getting caught on the ruffles, which is what was happening with the buttonholer foot because it's so long. So anyway, I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine buttonholes in. I just have to cut them open and add the nine buttons and this is complete. So um, got a little bit more time to my lunch. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that and I will come back to you when I have finished. Um, I kind of, I apologize for this video not winding up really showing you how I do anything. Uh, I have yet to figure out a good setup for you for good angles. I'm hoping to figure that out sometime within the next month or so, get a new tripod, move things around, etc. But um, I hope this was helpful. Again, I guess the, the biggest thing here is that I don't recommend this pattern. <laughs> so that's my helpful tip number one, don't use this pattern. Um, but otherwise, yeah. Anyway, I'll come back to you soon after I've done those buttons and buttonholes. All right. So all of the buttons are on the corset cover. All of the buttonholes are done. Everything else is done, which means this corset cover is done. Uh, well, it wasn't the one day project that I had originally hoped it would be. But then again, I did start at 2.18, I think, in the afternoon. So that was silly on my part. Um, it is still before 2.18 today, so it's less than a like t less than a 24 hour challenge. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this on over my new corset and see how it looks. I did not wind up adding any beading lace or anything around the neckline because the pattern actually wound up not calling for it. Uh, so if it is gappy, I will figure out what to do there, whether it's beading lace or drawstring. But for now, this is as the pattern kind of has it go together because I also sort of ignored a lot of the instructions because they were weird. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, go try this on over my corset and I'll be back shortly. All right, I have my corset on that I just finished. So now it is time to try out the corset cover. This corset, by the way, is um, Truly Victorian TBE01, I believe. This pattern, I highly recommend. It went together super, super well. The It needed almost no alteration even to the pattern pieces besides making it longer because I am so tall. 
and um, and it was quite easy and quite uh, good. I think it gives me a really nice shape that I want for this S bend. So um, yeah, I do highly, highly recommend that pattern. This one, maybe not so much. So let's see how this is when it's on. I used fairly cheapy buttons for this, which I'm not, I don't know, it's what I had. I might replace them at some point because I don't love them, but they're just cheapo plastic. Here is the corset cover. It is roll, roll blousey and roll long. I don't know if this is supposed to be how this is. It seems like like I need to take a lot out of this. Um, I don't think that just doing a drawstring is going to help because it's really this length is long, and that I think would really put all of this where it's supposed to be because you can see how it's gapping even at the back. So I think this is just, I made the arm size too long or something. It is definitely gapping at the front too, you can see. But, um, and unfortunately the style of making of this fully encases these shoulder seams. So it's not like I can just super easily open the seam because it's all like closed up and bound up and everything. So, um, I'll probably fix it eventually, but for now I'm just going to stick some pins in there so that I know how long it is. This would be solved by a drawstring. Um, I think that's where it wants to sit because this covers the top of the corset with the ruffles when I put them here. So when I take out that extra length, how oh, it makes the arm size short, I don't know. <sighs> But overall, there is the corset cover pattern that helps to give me that S-bend silhouette and helps to smooth the lines of the corset by adding 500 tons of ruffles. This angle is really amusing because from here it looks like I'm just made of ruffle with a little head on top. But anyway, my takeaway from this pattern is don't use it. Uh, <laughs> this was, again the Truly Victorian TVE02. This is an older copy. This is from 2012. So I suppose it is possible that maybe they have made some corrections to this since 2012. But uh, if you have the 2012 version, or if that's still the version, I don't recommend this. Uh, this was just weird in so many ways didn't like the instructions weren't complete they were weird worded weirdly they were just not great and um and i mean while this is okay i don't know that i love it but overall i mean i guess it went together in probably 10, ten hours ish maybe a little less um that seems like a lot for a corset cover to me but I guess I'm also impatient. Other takeaways. I would not recommend trying to do a one day make when you start it after 2 p.m. Because that doesn't give you a lot of time unless you're working on a really small project. I also would not recommend doing a one day make with a pattern that A, you've never used before, is B, from a company that you've only used one other pattern of theirs, uh, and C, C is a pattern that's not actually in your size and you have to size it up. A lot of factors go together into <laughs> ways that this was kind of doomed from the start. But, um, but overall, I mean, I now have a corset cover, even if it's not exactly 100% what I was hoping for, it still pretty much works. And uh, that's my one day make just wanted to pop back on here really quickly to say I did go ahead and take up the shoulder seams by a, um, almost three quarters of an inch um, and I also went and moved the buttons over about also three quarters of an inch just at the top and it has solved the gapping problem solved the shoulder gapping problem and so it's fitting a lot better now 
So even though it was weirdly constructed, I am getting a pretty good uh, corset cover out of it. And it's very, very pigeony, so it will give me a pigeon look. But uh, there we go, that's the finished corset cover. The actually finished, I'm not doing any more to it, corset cover. I do hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little different than what uh, I normally have on this channel, but when I heard about this challenge, I figured I needed a corset cover anyway. Why not just go ahead and try this? So um, I don't know that I will be doing many other videos like this in the future. I do hope to do more kind of sewing focused videos for you though, but I do need to figure out my setup first before those come out. So for now, if you do, want to see more videos like this or like other sewing content, please go ahead and make sure you click the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. You can also follow me over on Instagram at Lady Rebecca Fashions, where I post at least once a day with all sorts of costuming and right now Disney bounding content. And in the meantime, I do hope you have a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and happy sewing! I am now a giant balloon. This is something. <laughs>